Hello, and welcome back to the channel. This is the next episode where we are creating 2D platformer game in Unity. And in this episode, I wanted to show you how we can kill our hero. Basically, in a standard multiplayer game, you will have some situations when you'd like your player to lose and to kill your uh, player. Uh, two that come to mind is whenever the user is falling off from some platform into into some kind of hole uh, the other is whenever he's being hit by enemies and for example he loses all of his health since we don't have any health system implemented yet uh, but we have our level build up i believe this might be a nice place to uh, handle player falling out of the platform. So first thing we have to do is to add some kind of collider to uh, actually inform our player that well he he fell down right uh, so what I am going to do very simply is to go to my environment and I'm gonna create new empty here. I'm gonna call this, let's say, falling down collider or maybe bottom collider. And I'm gonna add a component of type box collider 2D. Uh, where is it? Uh, I'm gonna place it below our level and then move it to kind of sort of middle of our level then I'm gonna just increase the X size to cover both ends well that's a little bit too big I believe maybe 200 that should be more than enough okay and yeah then I would like to set it to being a trigger because we're not really interested in the, into the physical interaction between the collider and our player. I try just the information, hey, the player fell off the platform. So what I'm going to do is create new script. Basically what we could do is just uh, have this handle in a player movement. But we're trying to be precise here and have good architecture. So I'm, I will try to split um, the given feature across. Um, I will try to separate the features across many different sprint, uh, scripts. So I'm going to create new um, script. I'm going to call this player manager uh, and. I really don't like the word manager because basically it means like nothing to me. But the plan is to have the play, player manager as a, the mm, highest and um, let's say the most smart script that will coordinate the work of other scripts. Okay, so we have that and First thing I would like to handle here is to check for the collision. And I'm going to do this in on trigger anchor 2D. And if I just lock here die, and I'll try to run my game right now. Oh, we still have some left of unlocks so let's get rid of these and they are coming from player movement so let's just clean that up here we're logging the velocity we don't need that anymore let's clear and run it again okay if I go down well, nothing actually happens. Uh, and this is because we did not apply the script 
to our player so let's drag and drop it you can see the player manager being applied here and let's try that again yeah we have that logged in um the problem is we will be interacting with many different things in our platformer game so the question is how to actually how can we actually tell that given collider is of given type right there are two ways we could do that uh, one we could use a tag so let's try this as a first way we're going to call this bottom collider and then if i go to player manager we're going to create private const string bottom collider tag and i'm going to call this bottom collider and make sure that this name matches precisely to what we defined here okay and then i can just do if call compare tag a uh, bottom collider tag then just log by again and let's run it it should still work uh, if yeah it should still work if you could only add the given tag to a collider now it will work so moving on yeah it works one problem with the tags though is that um i believe we could have a big amounts of them and it might be a little bit tiring to just detect those so another approach to do just that i'm gonna leave it as it is for now is to find the collider and add a script to it i'm gonna call this bottom collider and I'm not gonna do anything with that script but it will work as a identificator of a given game object and what i mean by that is now that i know that it has a script i could go to game object get component and try to find the bottom collider and if the script is is given script is attached to that game object then we'll get something here otherwise we'll get no so let's try this again we're not comparing tags right now but we're using this script as an identifier of given game object and it still works so here we go here are two methods um, by which you can uh, identify given game objects uh, I'm going to stick with the tag um, right now, so let's remove that. Let get, I believe it's here. Let's get rid of that because we don't need it anymore. And let's get back to the old way of identifying our game object. Okay. And if this happens, we would like to call some kind of function. And I'm going to call this um, that. So what should exactly happen whenever our player dies? Well, this is entirely up to us, uh, but I would like the camera to stop following the player. I would like to disable the animation. I would like to replace our uh, current player uh, let's disable gizmos. Our current player sprite with a different sprite. One we have. Um, where do we have it? Uh, one we have here. This looks good enough, right? So this is currently in a sprite sheet. So I'm going to just copy and paste this 
and I will change the name to red liar player dead. Okay, that's descriptive enough. And I'd like to load that sprite and use it in my code in a runtime. So to do this, I can use resources. So let's just create new folder resources and this is a special folder for unity in which you can have um, some assets that will be loaded during runtime so let's get back here move that here have that in resources folder now and we can start coding so let's define the stuff that we need we're gonna need sprite renderer to apply to our sprite to sprite renderer. Then we're gonna have to have the reference to the animator to stop the animator. Player animator. Uh, then you have to have the reference to sprite. So sprite that player sprite. Then we have to have player movement reference because we'd like to um, disable the movement of the player whenever he dies and then we'd like to disable the follow player script so that's gonna be private follow target script okay follow target and I'm gonna initialize all of this inside of a wake. So, sprite renderer, we are here. Here is our player manager script, and the sprite renderer is in a child game object. So, what I can do is just um, just use get component in children get component in children of type sprite renderer uh, same goes for the player animator animator uh, then that player sprite can use resources uh, load type sprite because we're lo loading a sprite and the name is gonna be, and the writer is cool and smart enough to actually help me here. So it's gonna be red player dead. Uh, and the uh, follow target script, as you can see, is living inside of our camera, main camera game object. So I can just reach into that with camera, main, get component, follow target. Okay, cool. So what should happen when we die? We should disable the follow target script and animator. And we should replace the current sprite with the one we loaded. So before that, the animator actually was responsible for playing the animations and changing our sprites. And now since we don't have any kind of depth animation, even though we could create one, we can just apply a single sprite to the sprite renderer to have that effect. That player sprite. Cool. And then... Well, let's, let's see what will happen now. Okay, yeah. Uh, we saw that um, our, our player changed the um, its sprite. And we saw that the uh, camera is not following him anymore. So that's good but we could add something extra to it uh, and we could do some stuff whenever mario dies or maybe i saw it in some other um some other platformer the character just like jumps 
a little bit like when it when he's hit and when he dies and then it goes down so we could do that using our player movement mm, so what we have to do is basically get the reference to it so the player movement that's gonna be the same it's gonna be get component player movement and then i'm gonna create a another function inside the player movement i'm gonna call this on player death okay so since that method is gonna be used by another script we have to make it public so let's do just that um it doesn't return anything so void on player death Okay, and then what we'd like to do, we'd like to reach into input manager and disable it. I'm gonna also disable the box collider. Uh, so, and that's because maybe there's gonna be like some kind of platform in front of us and I would like a player to basically be rendered in front of it rather than colliding with it. Balls. and then to make our player um, did I change the name box collider 2d oh wrong button uh, so to make our um, our wonderful player jump we have to apply some velocity maybe times 2 and then also I would like uh, my player to rotate but let's handle that in a second so we go we go we go we go okay that's kind of nice but i think it would be funny if it could spin a little bit and if we take a look at the rigid body right now uh, we have the rotation in the z-axis priest so that's the rotation we're interested in so we have to change the constraints from the code to allow our player to rotate but this is rather easy we can just add the rigid body to d and set the constraints to rigid body none and then add torque which is like rotational force 20 force move to D impulse. That should make our player rotate. So let's see how that looks like. Okay, yeah, that looks perfect. And that would be a um, good place to display some kind of game over restart or load screen, right? But I'm gonna finish that here. And in the next one, we'll probably start working on our enemies. So thank you for that. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Goodbye.